Hello, Camly learners. My name is Guao. I'm a super tutor from Camly, and today I'm going to be teaching you about cooking and food, all the vocabulary you need to know. Now, this subject can be a little bit tricky, mainly due to the fact that in English-speaking countries there is a very rich diversity and mixture of cultures. But to make things easier, we're going to follow step by step, more or less, how you would cook food at home. Ready? Let's get started. So first things first. To prepare a nice meal, we need, of course, food. Fruits, vegetables, meat, whatever it is that you like. Fruits and vegetables have to be washed. And an important vocabulary about washing food is that you need to rinse it. We mostly know washing, meaning using soap to clean something, but not many of us remember rinsing. When we rinse something, we use water to clear everything out of it, to take the soap away, to take away dirt or just to make it a little wet, all right? Now, on the topic of fruits and vegetables, there are a lot of things that you can do to them. And most of these things have a very specific word for it. Take cut, for example. Cut is an umbrella word, meaning that it's a word that has a lot of ideas inside it. It's a very general thing, okay? If you want to be a little bit more specific, we have words like slice and chop. Now, slices can come in many different things. There are many examples of slices. The easiest one is a slice of bread. You see, it's thin on one side and kind of big on the other. We can have slices of many things like, let's say, meat. We can also have slices of cheese, of basically whatever it is you like. Okay? But that's the idea behind slice, a thin layer that's flat. Now that you understand slice, you can understand chop. Chop is also a word for cutting, but instead of long, thin pieces, you chop into squares or rectangles. The way to talk about chopping small pieces is to say that something is finely chopped. For example, we can have finely chopped onion or peppers or things like this. We can also chop fruit. Here, I have an example of chopped pineapple, which is personally my favorite, just so you can have a general idea. To get some food ready, however, you're gonna have to peel it. Peel is kind of a tricky word because it can mean two things. It can either be a verb or a noun. The easiest way to understand it is with a banana. Now, the verb to peel means to take off the skin or the outside layer of something, okay? So I can peel the banana. But remember I said that it was also a noun, and that is the actual skin itself. So we have a banana and a banana peel, the noun, the object. Another way to prepare some fruits and vegetables and even cheese is to use a grater. This right here is a grater. When we use a grater, the verb is to grate, okay? And as you can probably imagine, to grate just basically means to push a vegetable or a fruit through the grater to make tiny little pieces. Now that you have your food prepped, you can move on to the actual cooking process. And there are many, many ways to do this. Of course, the most popular are things like boil, steam, fry, or just grill. Each one of these has a specific meaning. To boil something is to put something into boiling water. That is, water that is above 100 degrees Celsius and it has a lot of bubbles. Only when it's bubbling like, is it called boiling water. When the water is very hot, but it's not really boiling and it just has some small little bubbles on the surface and it's slightly moving a little bit, that is called a simmer. When you have brought water up to a boil, you can also use this very, very hot water to steam something. The steam is the hot vapor that comes out of the water, that white gas that comes out of boiling water. And this, of course, as many of you know, can be used to cook 
It can be used to cook vegetables or meat. So you put something on top of the water or near it and the steam rises and it cooks it very, very slowly, very gently, okay? But what about cooking something a little bit more interesting, like meat? Meat isn't normally boiled or steamed. For meat, it is a lot more popular around the world to either grill it or fry it. When we grill something, it's very simple. We just put it on a grill, this right here. Now, it just means it gets cooked by the hot grill in the normal way, okay? When we fry something, it means that we use oil. And we can fry something in a pan, or we can deep fry it. To deep fry something, we normally need something like this. That's a deep fryer. And you can imagine the difference. To deep fry something is to put it completely inside the hot oil until it is completely fried. When we're talking about other ways of frying, we normally use a pan. To cook your food, you're going to need something to cook it with. Some students don't really remember the word appliance. Some people say a machine or a tool when they're talking about those things that usually help us do things around the house. They can be big or small, but of course, when we're talking about cooking and food, the most important ones, a stove and a fridge. There are some others, a blender, a coffee maker, or a microwave oven, often normally abbreviated or called just a microwave, okay? These are the most popular appliances around the world, but what appliances do you have in your house? There are many, many words for it and many, many types. Now, apart from appliances, we're also gonna need utensils. And the two most important that some people sort of mix up are pots and pans. Now, a pan is one of these. It's relatively flat, it's pretty easy to use, and it's quite convenient. But a pot is one of these. It's deep, it's a little bit bigger, and it's used for some things that are a little bit more complex, like a stew or a fancy soup, okay? Now, for utensils, most of you already know knife and spoon, but you might also need something else, like a spatula, which is very specific, or a whisk, which can be a noun or a verb, and what about a cutting board to complement that knife? On the topic of pots, pots are normally designed for liquids like soup, but they can also be used for some other things that can be quite interesting, let's say a pot roast. Right? Because of its shape, we can do something that is called stir frying. Stir frying is the mixture of stir and fry. You already know fry, but stir is very specific. Stir is when we take something long put it inside some utensil, like a pot or even a cup, and we move it in this circular motion, right? For example, we can add milk to our coffee and stir. Or we could add meat, a little bit of oil, and that is called stir frying. Because you're not exactly frying it, you're complementing it with the stirring. So it's a very special type of process to cook. A little extra word that you might want to know is cutlery. Cutlery is the general term for all the knives and spoons and forks that we may use. All those little metal objects that we use to eat, all of that is called cutlery. So don't forget it. All right. So you've already seen that some methods of cooking are very, very specific and they have a specific utensil, like stirring, stir-frying, or grilling. There is also a very popular one, baking. Whenever we use an oven, we bake. So we can bake a cake, bake cookies. So, food's almost ready. What's missing? Well, that's totally up to you. Some people like their food really, really intense, 
some not so much. So you can add salt, spices, butter, cheese. It's totally depending on you. One common thing is to melt something on hot food or in the pan itself. We can melt things like cheese or butter. And to melt is when we have a solid object or a solid food and it becomes liquid. That process is melting. Let's say you added some butter or some melted cheese onto your delicious steak. All that might be left is adding a pinch of salt. This expression comes from the word pinch, which is a verb. To pinch is to grab something with the tip of your fingers. And sometimes you can pinch someone and it hurts, but you can't really hurt salt. So you can use this as a way to grab salt. You put your fingers in, you pinch, and you add it. For this process, we have one word, and that is seasoning. Seasoning is adding this little extra flavor, usually salt and pepper. So that's it. Food is ready. It's ready to serve. And that's the last little word about cooking that I'm going to teach you. To serve food is to put it on a plate and bring it to someone, a guest or, of course, yourself. I hope you learned a lot. What are you cooking today? For those of you unfamiliar with Cambly, Cambly is a platform that gives you instant access to friendly native English speakers just like me. You can have an English lesson with us from anywhere in the world, anytime, using your phone, tablet, or computer. And you can actually even reserve a lesson with me using the link below. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Remember to share it with your friends, like, and subscribe to our channel. We're going to make sure to keep these videos coming. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.